morning. I'm Toby Hodges from Yachting World and it's a good day at the office today because we're out on the first 36. A boat I've been eager to, to sail for a long time. Under kite, I've got designer of the moment, Sam Manard, trimming the main with me. And uh, yeah, we're sailing along at about seven and a half to eight knots here, milking the, any breeze there is off La Rochelle. And it's a great time to get aboard what is a really interesting, proper new first from Beneteau and Seascape. So if you brand anything at first, it's obviously got big boat boots to fill. The 40.7, around 900 were built, and a 5 to 600 of the 36.7. So this has been quite a while in the design and gestation period, because they wanted to get it just right, and it's a really, really interesting new design from San Manard. And if you don't know Seascape, the Slovenian company formed by, uh, by Andras on the aft and Christian here, mini transat sailors. And they, they came out with a, uh, an 18, which won European Yacht of the Year, and then a 27 and a 14, and they are sports boats builders. And Benito bought the company 2018, and they, together with Sam, they designed this this 36 and it's the whole ethos of it is to encourage more people to sail so it has to be fast and fun and approachable uh, not daunting for average sailors and um, yeah it, it should be fun for what a first does which is crude racing the ability to cruise and shorthand sail it as well so Let's see if, uh, if it can do all of those things. It's a tall order, but so far, it seems to be fulfilling quite a few of those, especially the fun sailing part. A really interesting collaboration because uh, between Beneteau and Seascape and designers Sam Manard, Lorenzo Argento, and Giga, Gigo Design, and also Pure Engineering as well. It's quite a, quite a team to put this yacht together. And key to that really is building uh, a stiff, lightweight boat. So this is built essentially like a race boat. It's fully cored. There's no, there's no wood or grid liners in it. It's, um, yeah, completely cored race boat style build, but it's not, that doesn't make it, um, there's no exotic materials, it doesn't make it um, unapproachable in any way, as you can see from the deck layout. Um, it's a, a modest looking boat, so it's a nice design, but a key to the brief is that it, it, it can get up and go. So in 12 to 13 knots, uh, it should be clocking double figures. And uh, certainly when we have more breeze uh, before, uh, it's, it showed that it could easily start planing at sort of nine, nine and a half knots boat speed. So it's a 4.7, 4.7, 4 4.8 ton light ship, which is, yeah, very, very light for a, a production yacht. They've already sold 50 of these. only natural that things get a bit sportier when we've got mini transat and class 40 sailors aboard sailing just need a bit more pressure but yeah 
little couple of little gusts under the rain clouds. It doesn't take much for this boat to really get moving. So even in this sort of eight to 10 knots of wind, doing probably averaging eight knots. Good fun, everyone enjoying themselves. Easy boat to get going quickly and really, really responsive as well. So, as you can see, as well as it being a spacious modern hull shape that gives you good accommodation space, it's still very much a first in its heart. It's not a, um, the target for the boat was to be, to sit between, I guess, a more cruising area and the more niche, niche racing sports boats, such as the Pogos and JPK. So it needs to have a certain comfort and appeal and an inviting aspect to it. And that's what I think they've, they've achieved here. And it takes some elements of the, the first 53 and 44, which you know, have been designed inside by Lorenzo Argento, and he's done his uh, Italian trick here with this as well. Um, and some of those features that Benito included on it, which I think are really smart. Um, you'll notice straight away the warmth that the wood brings. Um, and the features I'm talking about uh, as well include uh, these curved fiddles and you know solid wooden rails as well, which, which really help. But the, the inclusion of all this timber inside was obviously done on purpose uh, and to give that inviting warm feel. So it's not just some stripped out racing boat. It still has a galley, it still has a proper nav station, it still has a good saloon table, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's, it comes as a bit of a surprise in a way because some of this wood is is very heavy. It's very heavy, you know, these are solid wooden steps, you know, plywood floors, plywood table, that sort of thing. It's, and the doors as well, look at the thickness of the doors. So it's, that is weight, it's all weight. There's 300 kilos just in the wood here. So you, um, the point, the reason I'm explaining that is because you can imagine there will be in time perhaps a, a, a sports version of this as well, a performance version. Anyway, some really nice features to point out. Start with this island. Uh, it's, it's useful, practical, and it's, and it's a seaworthy feature because it gives you something to brace against. It, it allows full walkthrough access to each side, and especially if you're um, you know, bringing spinnakers down through the forward hatch, You've got that clear, clear runway straight up through there as well. Uh, and yeah, it's a fridge, so it gives you good space in there. And then that shelf lifts out, so it's a double height uh, fridge. And it also connects these two areas as, as well, because there's a clever little feature here below, below the stove, and that's this big wooden chopping board. So there, you give yourself that extra work surface area, either on that side or to starboard. Um, simple, but clever. Uh, extends the work surface that you really need, but it gives you the access you need as well. Also really important to note, it, the, note that it's three cabin. This is the only layout, there are no changes. So it's three cabins, one heads. Uh, reason they've done that, they wanted to you know, keep it, keep one layout and they wanted a proper nav station. So they weren't moving on that. And uh, also when you go for typically at this size a two and one, so two cabins and one heads, uh, then you'd end up with a, a big stowage locker uh, aft really a workroom stowage locker. So what they've done here is have two double cabins aft, but both of them can be used um, as stowage. So you see that's uh, two singles. Well, that's below there, there's nothing that's stowage below, but that uh, bed board just literally slides across there. And we'll see that now in the port side. And that means you can, you know, I say stow all your sails or indeed cruising equipment if you are cruising as well, um, or have it as a double cabin. So I think it's a clever modular use of the space really. Uh, while we're in here, um, you have access into the engine room each side for these ones and then I'll open up this one now because it's the mechanical access 
the hot water tank. You see the aft end of the engine there. And below there is the fuel tank below that as well. It's a 90 litre fuel tank. And the water tanks are under the, star, uh, under the sofa berth. Got nice lighting. The finish on here seems pretty acceptable as well. Good hinges, um, nicely done. Good access through here, you lose your headroom. We've got six foot headroom just in this standing area as you go in. Um, obviously you have to duck through it. But they're, they're good size aft cabins for this size boat. And then yeah, moving forward you have a proper nav station, stowage below it. It's a conventional forward facing flat seat. Um, we've got full headroom on the outside, but this they have a bit of a where the whole line uh, deck liner is here. Um, there's a bit of a grab handle there, which can be useful going forward, but um, means your headroom reduces a little bit under that. Good size chart table lifts from the inboard end, and then the raised panel for your instrument switchboard there, Symarine touchscreen switchboard, and then access to all the wiring behind it. So the water tanks below those two sofa berths, 100 litres in each, batteries below in the bilge here. And yeah, these raised lockers, they are, I believe, changing slightly to make them a little less complicated. Um, but that's your galley stowage in there, behind the outboard behind there as well, and then the three drawers, which are nice and deep actually, all with soft closing mechanisms on them. And then there's another bin style stowage behind the, sorry, outboard of the sink. We've used Corian here. Um, yeah, again, these fiddles really useful when moving around the boat at sea. The saloon, really good size. So easily long enough to sleep on these berths, but super comfortable, thick cushions and are angled as well. So yeah, something we saw on the larger firsts, but um, really nicely done. Good size hull window and a little bit of uh, stowage outboard there. But you, you have full walk around access of, of the uh, saloon table. And it's good size as well. And drink stowage in the center. So yeah, showing you these things really to point out that it's not a stripped out boat. shallow bilge stowage there but really just access to the keel bolts there uh, yeah but the philosophy of the yard was to include everything and then those that really are keen on stripping extra weight bear in mind this is only a 4.8 ton yacht which well 4.75 lightweight which is very very light um, but yeah I guess in time those very very keen would be able to strip a few more hundred kilos out of that and then you have a sort of a V shape here where they create extra room going forward uh, and then the floor height reduces by about eight inches there to give headroom in the forward cabin and in the heads. Um, the heads is compact I would say it's probably the one compromise of having this large saloon and nav station area so uh, what they've done is chosen to mount the door to, to hinge inwards um, so that you can leave that door open, doesn't have to be closed all the time, ventilation and the feeling of space. And whilst they've come up with some clever solutions in here for one person to stand and, and be able to use it, um, yeah, it's still a bit of a squeeze getting in and out. But obviously that was discussed at length and the reason for it being is this is a boat to sail heads and bathroom you'd find on a plane really in that you get in here and then there's a room to then stand here and close the door but those taller I've lost my headroom here so it's under under five nine here um, there's not a lot of swinging space for that door however in here then obviously heads there and there's a neat fold down sink area so you could stand to wash brush your teeth that sort of thing um, or obviously sit on the heads uh, to have a shower and a little bit of stowage behind there as well. Mm -hmm. 
and then forward curving simple no frills it needs to be really bearing in mind you know a lot of time we've had a spinnaker in here but once you've got the mattresses back on you've got, you've got yourself a good size v berth there single cupboard on the entrance here and then headroom just starts to reduce as you move forward that final meter towards the berth uh, yeah for a 36 footer not bad at all conventional engine access to the 30 horsepower Yanmar they could have gone with a smaller engine but it's the same size block and weight so just a bit more torque so yeah 30 horsepower Yanmar sail drive as standard so from the bow, the bow sprit is optional. It can come up, but it was GRP built. So there was a stainless structure put inside that for the anchor roller. Um, so yeah, solid bow roller. I imagine, well, everyone so far has chosen that option, obviously. And then nice size chain locker under the forge hatch with a windlass. You notice how all the stanchion bases are supported extra, and they are through bolted through the hull and deck and then this tow rail is an extra inboard of it so it feels feels nice and sturdy and safe moving up on deck they wanted to go for rather than the flash hatches you see here and further aft a proper offshore style raised hatch there and the reason being is that you know the waterproofing that gives you and also you know something to put your brace your foot against when you are working up on the foredeck the non-slip is all molded into the boat so as i probably mentioned before it's a fully cored vacuum infused vinylester hull and deck with corsel foam used throughout so yeah this is race boat style building um, to a repeatable budget z spars two spreader rig and you can see how the running rigging from that including two top halyards are brought back exposed here on the coach roof to a bank of six, cl six clutches each side chain plates led off so you've got good wide side deck access moving up and down and it's really the point to note about the the deck and the cockpit itself is it's it, it's in, it's inviting it's nice, nothing there to really put you off it's more just going you know come and sail it there are quite a few boats in this category where you think oh not it's not so appealing for those that might not be high-end performance sailing sailors so this uh, it's just been really really well thought out for sailing the boat and getting the most out of it without it being a cluttered um, uninviting space So you have on these clutches, you have uh, control from the vac for the vang each side on these cam cleats, and and the other thing outside of the clutches is having an inboard puller for the 3D Genoa sheets there, uh, and then on this side on the coach roof, again on a cascade system, you can pull it back out as well, so you can really adjust the height. Um, and how far inboard or outboard your jib, your jib sheet lead is. There's apparently quite a lot of discussion early on about whether they offer the boat with a tiller as well, um, which may come in time, but is not an option at the moment. Uh, as it is, it's yeah, again, it's the, decided to go for that to suit the majority of, of buyers and sailors. So I think it was nine out of 10 of the 36.7 buyers chose wheels you've got a good grab handle above this table itself and then what you don't see here is the optional aft end of the benches which are there on the dock at the moment which just screw into or pop out of these areas there which would extend your cockpit seating um, yeah when you're racing it's better to get rid of those have this less weight less and, and more space basically I like the addition of these first tail bags as well. It's really kept the cockpit nice and neat. 
um, yeah, good. It's a really nice area to work these primaries as well, especially without these benches here because you've got a, they're enough inboard. You've got a good foot bracing to stand and work the winch. And then it comes to the actual helmsman and main sheet trimmer if it's in, in crude guys. So when you're sailing crude, the main sheet trimmer can sit in here or further forward if the helmsman is sat in this space. Sitting here, you're obviously working the winch from behind you, but otherwise, if you sit in this slot in between, steer with the wheel from here, and then you have to hand the main sheet winch, and then the traveler control right where you need it here, and also backstay, and the backstay on good cascade system, so it's really easy to put purchase on and off there from either side, and have a bit of a brace against the uh, the pedestal there. Just a simple neat lead of the main sheets through a turning block in here and out onto these performer 40 winches each side. In terms of stowage aft you've got a nice quarter locker with a bag here separating it from the rest of the aft locker which is below central helm area here and a gas locker on the port side stepping down into here access to the twin quadrants autopilot gear this one's got a heating system on it cruiser racer after all and yeah otherwise extra stowage space say the build quality and the finish quality for this market and uh, price point looks really really good yeah to build a, a production yacht at this size and for this volume they should be doing I think uh, well 50 ordered probably building 30 a year at the moment um, it is pretty impressive so this swim platform for example again foam cord construction weighs just eight kilos really encouraging to see Beneteau really making another push in the first area again in recent years but I think particularly in this size and price point so this is a 220,000 euro base price boat so typically equipped ready to sail away all in is 300,000 euros uh, and I think with their, with their partners at Seascape, they've done a really good job um, together with design by Sam Manard and yeah, the engineering side of it. Um, it's, a, it's an impressive boat. We've only had light winds, been out sailing over the last th two or three days and uh, it's still been really enjoyable uh, to helm. It's got a sporty boat feel to it. Uh, it's not... Um, it. <laughs> It's approachable, but it's really, really fun. And that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to put the fun back into sailing. And uh, let's hope it does that. Now I just want to have it in 20, 25 knots, reaching with some swell. That'd be fun. Anyway, it's been enjoyable. Hope you, hope you like the tour. See you next time.